Hello, it's Dave here from Alpha Cool, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Alpha Cool Ice Block Aurora GPXN. This one is for reference cards, and AIB and Founders Editions are completely different, so make sure you check the compatibility list before you purchase a card, and also make sure you've got the correct block for your card. As you can see, this block is rather pretty. This is obviously the Plexi version, but we'll have an Acetel version coming sometime soon, so if RGB isn't your thing, that'll be perfect for you. With the 30 series backplates are included and with this particular version it's a really nice brush black aluminium backplate. It serves multiple functions, it keeps the card rigid, it helps cool in the back of the PCB and it looks really nice which is a brucey bonus. Of course it is 2020 so ARGB is included with the block. We're using a JST connector but we do include an adapter to allow you to plug it into a 3 pin ARGB standard header and also to use it with other products. We don't want to lock you in with our ecosystem so we included that. Continuing with what's in the ice block box we have the rather tasty flush stop fittings. You might have seen these on our radiators or other products already but these are great. They sit flush within the terminal block and they finish off the loop perfectly. To ensure there's no damage to the stock fittings, the terminal or anything else, make sure you use the included tool. The tool is actually designed to damage itself before it damages anything else and also it ensures you're not going to have any leaks. The cold plate design on this block is a little bit different than you usually see from us. We're actually using three separate pieces of solid nickel plated copper rather than just the one. This just ensures maximum compatibility between the reference models whilst also ensuring that all the important components on the graphics card are sufficiently cooled. Speaking of cooling, let's get onto the thermal pads. This time, instead of colour coding them, we're actually numbering them. Each number is printed on the removable plastic of the thermal pad, as well as being referenced in the manual, ensuring that there's no confusion. The sizes are also given in the manual, so that if you do need to get replacements in the future, you can do. Numbering the thermal pads has made it a lot easier to show you exactly where each pad goes, so there should be no problems of figuring out what goes where. You have a blueprint of both the block and the rear of the GPU there, so it's just a case of matching the numbers. We're almost making it too easy for you. That's pretty much everything you need to know about the block itself, so let's fit it to the card. This is actually a reference 3080, but as mentioned, it also fits a reference 3090. Obviously, it depends on which card you have, but most of the steps should be similar. And in any case, the first thing you're going to want to do is remove the screws on the back plate. Make sure your screwdriver is adequate for the job, you don't want one that's too large or too small and you definitely don't want to use a Swiss Army knife that hopefully has a Phillips head screwdriver in it. Yeah, we went there. Once the back plate is out the way we can move on to the four screws that hold the cooler to the GPU. Personally I like to unscrew the screws partially first and then go back and unscrew them fully on the second pass. On the first pass I'd do diagonal corners just again to make sure everything's nice and even and to stop any unwanted tension. Once them four screws are out and you've removed everything there's actually two last screws on the very very end of the card. Make sure you remove these before you try and pull off the PCB. You don't want to damage anything, it's an expensive card, make sure you look after it. And whilst we're on the subject of looking after things, make sure you put the screws in a little bag, just keep them safe. If ever you need to put the air cooler back on, you always want to know where they are. I usually put them in either the GPU box or put them in the water block box, just to make sure they're safe. The next job is to give you a quick visual, check that there's no thermal pads left and they are removed and they're kept somewhere safe, and make sure there's no hidden screws anywhere. Although we know that all of the screws are removed from this card, other cards might be slightly different and you don't want just to pull off the PCB blindly, you don't want to damage anything. When you do gently remove the PCB, just make sure you're checking for resistance, if anything stops you, stop and have another look. Be mindful of the wires, so the fans and the LEDs, these are quite delicate. Also when you do remove them, remove them from the actual connector and don't yank on the wires. You can pull the actual pins out of the terminals or the connector and that's not fun for anybody. You don't want to damage anything when you're installing a water block. Once everything is disconnected and you can remove the cooler, take it off and put it somewhere safe. It's always best that you know where it is because if you do ever need to go back to air cooling for any reason, then you know where it is and you've got it sorted out. Once that's done, remove the thermal pads that are left on the PCB. Don't worry if some of these are ripped, we do sell replacement thermal pads and everything you need to install the actual block is included in the box, so these aren't needed. 
those of you with eagle eyes will have spotted that I've missed two of the thermal pads here but I got a little bit of ahead of myself and I did spot them later on. We're using pure alcohol with blue paper here to get the thermal paste off. The isopropanol alcohol is perfectly fine but this kind of blue tissue paper isn't great. However, it's what we had to hand and we still managed to do a good job of cleaning everything up. Do be careful around the GPU with the tiny components though, that's where the paper will snag. Once again, give the whole board a quick visual check. If you've forgotten or missed any thermal pads or paste, remove it and make sure the whole board is clean. This next stage isn't necessary, but it's something that I always do, it's just good practice, and that's have a little bit of a dry run with the card. Just check that it fits and make sure everything seems to line up. It's a lot easier to do it now when there's no thermal paste and pads in the way than it is later. Now that you've handled the block quite a bit, you might have fingerprints and grease on the cold plate. Just give the metal parts a quick wipe, but don't get any of the alcohol on the acrylic. It's time to actually start assembling the water block. It's really simple to do thanks to the numbered thermal pads and the corresponding diagrams in the manual, and it's just a case of number six goes where number six goes. Number 5 goes where it says number 5. It's like painting by numbers, it's that simple. You could probably even get a child to help you and turn it into a little game. It's that simple. The way I like to do it is to remove one side first, then I put it on the block and it holds it in position, and then I pull off the other side. Do make sure that you remove both sides of the plastic, that's the only part here that you might mess up on. It's the controversial part, the thermal paste. Our advice is to always spread a thin layer onto the GPU, However, I'm a rebel and I did it like this. The reason I've done it like this is I've simply fit many, many water blocks and I'm pretty confident that this, when compressed, will spread and cover the whole die. If you're not sure and you've got any doubt whatsoever, make sure you spread the thermal paste. It's the only way to be 100% sure. Equally, if you do have high temperatures ever, make sure this is one of the first places you check. There's plenty of thermal paste so you can do two or three applications, no problem. This is certainly a case of do as I say, not as I do. Next we're going to use the graphics card box to help us to actually install the block. It's really really simple and it's a really good trick to know. You just put the block on top of the box and then put the PCB on. If it was on a table or a flat surface this would happen, but simply move it over the edge of the box and everything can just sit flush. You can now line up all of the screw holes and make sure everything's in the right place without moving any of the thermal pads or getting the thermal paste everywhere. Inside the accessories box there are four spring screws and four small clear plastic washers. These are for the four screw holes that are around the GPU itself. The washers are tricky to hold so I opted to put them on the screw first and then hold the washer in place whilst I put the screw into the hole. We're then going to tighten the screws like we would a CPU cooler. So it's corner to corner and we're going halfway, then going back round and nipping them back up. This just ensures even pressure over the whole of the die and ensures you don't strip the screws, you don't damage the GPU or do anything else like that. Once all the screws are tightened, you just simply get rid of the cat air. Wait, get rid of the cat air? What? Why is the cat air on here? Oh, apparently we'll find out at the end of the video. Now that's done, it's a job that looks very familiar indeed, it's thermal pad time. It's exactly the same, it's paint by numbers, it's just number 9 goes to number 9, number 12 goes to number 12, you get it. The only difference here is that you have to be careful of the ones right next to the screw holes, because if it does overhang, obviously it'll obstruct the screw. If you do find that they are slightly too long, just cut them with a pair of scissors and you're golden. Also, do make sure you remove both sides of the plastic because on occasion we have seen people forget and it doesn't do anything good for the temperatures. Once we've got the thermal pads in place according to the manual, we're going to install the back plate. For this, we're just going to plop it on top, make sure everything lines up and screw it in. As always, I like to do corner to corner, half tighten them, then fully tighten them, but as long as the screws are in place, it doesn't really matter how you do these ones. And that's it. You've installed a water block. It's that easy. I know I've said it's simple many, many times throughout this, but it really, really is. So it's glamour shot time. Oh, it's pretty, isn't it? Look at that. I'm actually going to steal this one and put it in my own personal system. Sorry, boss. If you've got any questions at all about this block or any other Alpha Cool products, feel free to give us a shout on our social media channels that are in the description, or also visit us on our forums. 
You can also email us at info at alphacool.com and for the latest block availability, just keep an eye on the site. We will have the latest and greatest in store for you very, very soon. Alright, that's me done for now, so see you soon. Now that's over, I'm going to apologise about the cat air. At the moment, due to world circumstances, I'm working from home office and also recorded the video here. Due to that, Alpha Kitty decided to, well, yeah, get hair everywhere. Sorry about that. <laughs>